Well, I'm Luther Kruger with the Big Blue Sun Museum of Solar Cooking, uh, based out of Minneapolis. And I'm here with Tom Hallquist, and do I get the website right? SunOvenReflectors.com? SolarOvenReflectors.com. SolarOvenReflectors.com. Tom Hallquist, SolarOvenReflectors.com. Uh, we're at the Midwest Renewable Energy Association Fair in uh, Custer, Wisconsin. And uh, Tom's going to talk a little bit about how he got into solar, and his project was actually making cookers, helping them get distributed in, around the world, and uh, and then how what he sees the future of solar cooking and promotion of them uh, throughout the world. So, so the first question, Tom, how did you first learn about solar energy, and how did that morph into solar cooking, and and into your current project? Well, my wife teaches uh, physics in high school and uh, chemistry, but she did a participated program called Solar Olympics. And one of the things that the kids had to do was make a solar oven. Um, so I got interested in that from uh, her work. And then we were uh, members of the Midwest Renewable Energy Association. And we come to the energy fair um, most years. And uh, there were a couple people selling uh, solar cookers here, the sun oven and the uh, solar oven sport uh, from the Solar Oven Society. Um, so between the two, um, uh, I got intrigued by solar ovens and uh, ways of making them. So we've come up with a couple designs. The first is uh, one that I can turn a little bit toward the camera, sure. but it's just a round bottom oven and I can tilt it back and forth and aim it at the sun. Sure. And so that is, uh, uh, but it's a standard box oven, uh, and that's more like the uh, sun oven. Uh, uh, but the problem I ran into is that these are great ovens, but they're a little bit hard to transport. So I wanted something that was uh, uh, durable, um, as least expensive as possible, um, that was simple, and uh, didn't take a lot of space. So I... Uh, came up with another design, uh, I call it a sun dome, but it's basically uh, a plastic dome that fits over a black pot, and instead of tilting the whole oven, you just tilt the reflector. And there's a series of screws where I move this up and down. So this is right now set up for early morning sun uh, or later afternoon sun. And as the sun comes up more during the day, you just tilt the reflector back and uh, uh, and, and it picks it uh, so, so you, you can nice thing about this you can use it a little bit earlier in the day and you can use it a little bit later in the day but uh, but it's more of a panel oven not a box oven where there's air that's insulating the pot uh, and it's just held around the uh, 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 like an oven bag and a cook it kit but it's uh, and then there's a little uh, platform the pot sits on, uh, just like a cookie cooling sheet uh, to keep air underneath it. Uh, and there's no insulation except underneath it. I put some uh, warm uh, material, which is a reflective material that they make uh, uh, oven gloves out of. And there's a company that makes, uh, makes this fabric. The nice thing about this is that the uh, four of these ovens will fit in a 16 by 25 a suitcase, um, and, and here's a suitcase with uh, a couple of the ovens packed in. I had this oven packed in, but it's, uh, so it's not about making the best oven, it's about making the simplest oven that's durable. Uh, these plastic domes are made out of polycarbonate, and I can stand on them without them breaking. So, and, and they have a UV coating, and they uh, uh, are just, the other, uh, thing that with this design is each of these um, domes are made out of a 16 by 16 inch piece of plastic. Plastic comes in 4 by 8 sheets so when I cut the plastic um, there's no waste whatsoever and then uh, these reflectors and the material in this oven also is uh, 
16 inches on one of the dimensions, and the uh, manufacturer makes their coil uh, anodized aluminum and 48 inch wide sheets. So if I make 100 ovens, I have very little waste. It's just a couple corner cuts. So we're trying to reduce the amount of waste that we have with the uh, sun dome design. Sure. Wow. So. Yeah, so it's basically like, is this a, is like a plywood base and then the insulation? or just oh, No, the, there's just a fabric underneath. Oh, and then the, oh, there's, actually, yeah, and then the. Otherwise, oh, yeah. the entire oven is just this metal part. Sure, okay. And, and a plastic dome. Yep. And we, I use office binder clips that you can buy by the case uh, for two bucks a, uh, for 12. Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> to, to hold it, and then a little rubber seal around it. Sure, yeah. sure. And uh, in this one, there's the wood. You got to have the wood here so you don't have the heat transfer out, right? Is that the yeah? And there's a little rubber gasket mm -hmm. uh, that's on the top. I can um, take the top off, and you can see there's a little rubber white gasket. Uh, yeah. And in third world countries, sometimes they use bicycle inner tubes sure. where they failed. <laughs> that's the most common gasket yeah. available. So yeah. So okay. And you've distributed these for oh, quite a while. I remember seeing your uh, website a few years back. How long have you been at this? Um, well, uh, we sold them on eBay of the round design initially, um, you know, for, for about a dozen years. They got a little big, bit big to pack and uh, ship. So I, the nice thing about the other design is they fit in a much smaller box. And since I've been retired, I actually haven't been... Uh, selling them on eBay or uh, people call me occasionally for them. Uh, I just uh, took some time off from packing and shipping the ovens. So uh, there's uh, the, uh, uh, but the only one if somebody finds my website and calls, uh, we've been selling the, um, the Sun Dome oven because it does fit in a much smaller box. It's a lot easier to pack up. Sure. Uh, and, but uh, mainly I try to donate them. Uh, we just had uh, um, somebody from Zambia take uh, a suitcase full of uh, ovens, which is four, to um, Zambia. Um, and and uh, he's in a village uh, where he said the average wages is $2 a day, and his goal is to increase wages $5 a day. One of the big uh, issues there is people sometimes spend half their monthly income on charcoal. And, and so if you could ship them into areas like that, uh, and you look for areas where people have to walk more than 10 miles round trip to get wood, refugee camps, or um, have to spend half their monthly income on charcoal, then they will be receptive to solar cooking. Anything less than that, uh, people are, have trouble uh, introducing solar cooking because it's a different way of cooking. It's, uh, you have a recipe, you have to put it in an oven and let it set, so you can't stir and taste and if you cook over a three stone fire, um, people like to stir, add ingredients, and have no clue how to cook in an oven. Sure. So. Well, you hope the you know, Peace Corps volunteer or the uh, person that has connections to that village, uh, if, they, if they'll come over and you, we'll show them how to use them, sure. and if they're enthusiastic about it. And a lot of times, the, uh, a, lot, a lot of them will end up like a Peace Corps volunteer wants to cook in an oven for their own taste and their own and and if they don't uh, if they don't have the conditions where they are spending more than half their monthly income on uh, uh, charcoal uh, the uh, american volunteer will use them for themselves and demonstrate it and see if there's any interest so a lot of it is just to de demonstrate the nice thing about uh, you talked about bringing parts and stuff uh, the parts for 200 ovens, the metal will occupy um, a 16 um, by, uh, you know, 1,000 pounds, uh, a 16 inch by 48 inch by about two or three feet high space. And so, uh, and then the domes nest together, so you can ship a lot of domes together. The big problem is the pots, because uh, they, uh, they don't nest. And that's, that ends up taking up the most room because you're shipping air. But if you ship the metal and hinges um, unfolded, uh, that's another way of doing it. And you could manufacture them overseas. Um, we, I haven't tried 
I've only tried doing that once uh, to Haiti, and the container unfortunately got stolen. So, oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. Well, and the pots, uh, I've heard rumors about it, and it sounds like it's true. They don't make these in that same size, or even these. That company is not yeah, yeah. Uh, Granite Ware went out of business uh, about a, a little over a year ago, and uh, most solar cookers are designed to use a three uh, pound, uh, 10 inch uh, round granite ware pot. And so we're looking for other uh, substitutes for it. Uh, I have a couple of anodized aluminum camping pots, but I have not been able to find where I bought them from sure. again. So, so. Uh, that's kind of the next step is to find uh, uh, an anodized aluminum camping pot that's similar in size to these uh, granite ware pots. Sure, but for the but for that matter, I mean it's a fairly large pot that goes under. That's a fairly large pot yeah that yeah. fits under this, so you could fit a smaller pot. You could certainly yeah. can. And yeah. uh, ideal, of course, as we we know, if they're dark, the darker the better. Yeah. The thinner, the thinner the metal, and so forth. So, yeah. so it's not like it it. it takes you out of the picture because you can still get this to people right they might yeah. be able to find one locally and, yeah. yeah 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 well i uh about a year no maybe two years ago i think i dropped in on your shop and uh picked up three or four i don't know Cookers, couple, yeah. You, yeah you gave me a couple extras and and they work i mean they work fantastic so uh this is great so what do you think the future is for solar cooking promoting it what's what's your best tips for making sure they get uh, get into the hands of the people that need them, whether it's to prevent deforestation or reduce waterborne diseases or, or what have you. Well, from my standpoint, it's finding people that are going to a place uh, where they uh, would be receptive to solar cooking. So either places like refugee camps where uh, it's unsafe to leave them and, and gather firewood, places that, uh, uh, in places like Africa where it's semi-arid and it's getting more arid due to climate change and uh, they need an alternative to uh, firewood to charcoal um, so it's just the place is a very high need and uh, in, uh, uh, in terms of uh, solar cooking um, if we looked into uh, ones that could be rounded, be stamped out in metal stamping. And a lot of those uh, metal dyes and uh, companies have minimums of a million to three million to five million parts. So uh, uh, when you have a demand of a few thousand a year, they're going to be made uh, by hand or, or by laser. These round ones are made from laser cut uh, metal. So. Well, I'm retired, okay. <laughs> so I, 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 but I was a practicing dentist until COVID hit, okay. and then I, uh, I was planning on retiring um, May 1st, and I retired March sure. March 17th, so. I asked. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, I, I think when you first make a solar cooker, you're trying to make a bigger, better one, yep. and uh, and then kind of you realize that uh, you, you want a one that's durable, portable, um, and, and simple to make, so you, uh, and hopefully getting the cost down. Sure. So it's a, and, and not using a lot of extra materials that end up in recycling. Yeah. So that uh, it's it's about making uh, one that people are going to be receptive to, that they can ship in a in my case a suitcase, uh, like some of these others that Luther sure. mentioned. So, but uh, thanks for making all these podcasts throughout the nation. Oh. It's, thank you. Well, thank you for, for taking the time. And I mean, this fair is fantastic. And it's, it's kind of in a, a reboot mode because of the pandemic. But you can just, I mean, you look out in the, the yard here, you know, quick, uh, you know, you can see the people milling about, they're going to get food, they're networking. I mean, that's so important to make sure people are talking to each other and uh, exchanging ideas. And um, my motivation was I got out of college in 85 and I realized I hadn't had many history courses. But then I looked at the wiki that Tom Sponheim and Paul Hedrick and a bunch of others uh, put together for solar cooking. And the history of solar cooking is just massive and they have done this Herculean job. Uh, but there's always a need for the current here and now. Who is doing it now? Okay. What are they doing? How are they doing? What tips do they have? And so my modest contribution I hope is people will see one video and say, oh, I can do that. Or, hey, I wanna contact uh, that person and see what I can do similar to that. I mean, how many people can uh, take a few 
make a few cookers at a time and send them to people that they know are going to a place where they need them. I mean, that's a great idea. That's it's like one of about 10 or 15 ways to promote them. I don't know anyone else that's doing it that way. They usually go there and uh, do the classes and bring a bunch of cookers or they ship a bunch. Uh, I interviewed one, I interviewed one guy who they made all the cookers, shipped them over, and uh, his, his wife went out, went there to the country where they shipped them, like two weeks after they shipped them. Uh, they kept not hearing about them, not hearing about them. They found out they were stuck in customs for like a month and a half. And by that time, you know, she had to get back, they had to get on with their lives, and they kind of basically don't even know what happened to them. <laughs> you know, so it's a real challenge. But if you're right. sending them with people, this is why I like the idea. Uh, it's simple, someone else, anyone else can do it. Just find someone who's going where it's needed and ship a few with them. So they, they're watching it as it's, they're going with their bags, you know. Right. Uh, it, it's way more secure that way. It's all in one suitcase. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, no, thank you. Thanks again. This is fantastic. Good. Thank you very much.